Hello investors, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Michael from Deep Value Returns and Seeking Alpha. Today I want to talk about Robinhood. So Robinhood is a stock that you can kind of think about it as like having an endowment effect and how, you know, shareholders are more likely than not holding a meaningful loss here. But, um, you know, there's not a reason really here to remain convinced that this is going to turn around. So we're going to go through what the business uh, does. We're going to talk about the growth prospects. We're going to talk about this valuation. And lastly, uh, yeah, just, you know, why investors uh, shouldn't really be getting too much involved in this name. So, I mean, here's how the stock has done since it was out the gates. And I mean, I've followed this stock countless times. So here in red is uh, my, my first article that I wrote uh, that there was too little upside and too much risk. And I concluded that um, basically investors uh, were paying too high a value, uh, too high a price, sorry, there's not enough value, too high a price for what actually uh, the business is offering. There wasn't enough upside potential. And when I first published that article, it was at $45 and the stock is down approximately uh, 70%. And I mean, so there's a quote from David Ihorn that uh, I think can help here. So uh, what do you call a stock that's down 90%? A stock that was down 80% and got cut in half. So as a value investor, you know, I kind of resonate with that a lot because, you know, we've all been there. And I, I believe that anyone watching this video also, you know, you, you'll have been there at some point in time. You know, every single investor at some point in time has faced up to this problem. And, you know, we all know the arguments well that this time is different and, you know, that just because something is down so much, it has to have some value. But, I mean, I believe that in this case, particularly right now, I don't think that's the case. And to be absolutely clear, you know, I understand that all tech stocks have been really battered, you know, mid, mid, uh, mid cap, small cap, you know, it's just been just like, whoo, wipe out. Um, but I mean, some stocks, I believe that they're justified to be down and some stocks, I think that they're not justified. Anyway, um, here's the thing. Revenue growth rates are just, just too unpredictable. So as we go through this, so next uh, week on Thursday after hours, they're going to report their Q4 results. Okay. Now, Q1 of last year, as you can see here on the graph, was really, really strong, right? Q1, 21, share uh, revenues were up 309% year over year. So it's very, very strong, right? Now, as we come to laptop period this year, we have to think about that and how, so, you know, it's expected largely to be negative, the guidance for um, Q1, 21, uh, Q1, 22 is expected to be negative year over year, okay? So everyone's kind of in that ballpark. Where analysts kind of have a different point of view to me is that analysts are predicting that over 22 as a whole, Robinhood grows its top line approximately 22% year uh, mid 20s uh, year over year. Now, for that to happen, if we all kind of largely agree that Q1 is going to be negative, that means the second half of 2022 has to be pretty damn strong. And I'm, this is where I'm not quite sure. I think that the investors, the analysts, have still uh, quite rose tinted uh, glasses when it comes here because. It's difficult to see how the prospects will develop so much that Robinhood could indeed be uh, generating a 22, 25% uh, top line growth of the whole of 2022. So let's unpick here the near term prospects. Okay. So as you can see here in the graph uh, in kind of uh, lime green, you can see that approximately 80% of Robinhood's revenues come from transaction based revenues. Okay. This is like any broker, right? So any broker, the more you transact, the more they make uh, their revenues, okay? Now, within, sorry, so it was actually 73%, but it's close, you know, 80%. Uh, so 73% is actually uh, from the transactions. And within the transactions, you can see here, highlighted in the green box, that it comes from either options or cryptos, okay? So this 80% of the transaction-based revenues come from options or cryptos, okay? Now, let's look at the red arrow. The red arrow is showing that for Q1 21, this was last year, uh, 88 million was made from crypto revenue. Now, we know that approximately 40% of the revenues that make that come from crypto, from Robinhood, are coming from Dogecoin. So, if we make the argument that Dogecoin going into Q1, it's not going to be that exciting. There's not going to be that much uh, motivation for trading around. Um, in that light, that 
as it compares with the, the same time a year ago, it's going to come quite negative. Now, here's the thing. Right? So, um, as you can see here in the graph, Dogecoin has been really, really flat for the last several months. And the propensity for traders to kind of get involved and to trade around isn't going to be uh, that strong. So, you know, um, it's going to be quite muted. And you can look at Bitcoin and other, uh, other currencies as well. Overall, investors' appetite for trading cryptocurrencies is quite muted going right now in January and perhaps for the remainder of Q1. But you have to take it in the context of how it was in the same period a year ago. The same period a year ago, everyone was really excited. Everyone was like, oh my God, crypto, crypto, crypto. Right now, people are not really kind of doing that. So in that light, the crypto aspects are not going to be... Uh, really drive in the top line you could make the case that the option side of the revenue could be a meaningful driver but i'm not quite sure because you know the way that options work is when people are kind of believe that they're going to go to the moon if you look at the demographic that is on robin hood predominantly millennials and if you think about where they would be likely to invest they would most likely be invested in let's say small and uh, mid-cap tech stocks and stuff like that. And in that light, if the market for them is down significantly, they won't be that inclined to trade around and if they're not with options. And if they're not inclined to trade around with options, as we compare with the same period ego, we're going to be posting really, really grim guidance. Now, as we go through and think about this, right? So investors are asked right now to pay approximately five times sales for the business. Now, as we think about it, right, stocks don't really trade in a vacuum, right? So you can get an unpredictable business as Robinhood priced at five times sales that may or may not have some kind of positive surprises along the way. More likely not, I believe, will have a lot of negative surprises. Or you can get some of these kind of SaaS businesses that are incredibly predictable, very, very strong net retention rates, uh, priced at similar valuations. So many of them are, uh, that are expecting mid-20s growth rate have been really battered right now. Or you, perhaps you want to pay a tiny, tiny, just a fraction bit more, and you can get some of these businesses that are compounding at 30% price a single, a, a, single, um, a single digit to sales. So, and those businesses have really high gross margins, so it's not like Robinhood that's unprofitable. So as we go through, I find it quite difficult to kind of get compelled here to... Uh, to invest in this business. Now, as I alluded to at the start, so, you know, what the endowment effect is, is when something you own something, you end up giving it a higher value than what you would own, what you would pay for it if you didn't own it. So if you are in a Robinhood, you may believe, oh, you know, this is going to go around and around and in no time, this is going to be trading for 40, 50 billion. And it's difficult to make that argument uh, right now from what I see. Uh, just because something is down so significantly, it doesn't mean that it cannot continue to go down. But anyway, I hope you found this video useful. And yeah, so don't forget to check out my marketplace it's called Deep Value Returns. I'll tell you what quality stocks I invest in right now. And you can check out what other people said in the reviews. We started to do the diligence there. And yeah, see you soon. Bye-bye.